I don't know if I was introduced. Uh, my audio is being real weird. Okay, he's playing a theme. Let's bring on Kelly Wells. Kelly, welcome to the show. Cheers, home slices. I assume that that was Kazuchika Okada's music, but uh, but not coming through on my end. Maybe that's right. how it's done now. Um, well, if, well, if you can hear, if you can hear us, that's all that matters at the end of the day. <laughs> yes, I uh, yeah, I, I I this is my third podcast in the last what is it fourteen hours. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't have a lot of sleep between then and now. So, so if people, if your paying customers are here for the surly version of me that often rears his head, um, I'm just saying it's a possibility. The problem is NXT's put together a pretty good show and has promoted it well. So I don't have much to complain about. Very, very true. So let's get into that. Um, I never, NXT is always known for bringing up songs that I've never heard of in my life. Um, (laughs) And the theme song for this this show for the NXT Battleground from Lowell, Massachusetts, is a band called Privis, and the song is called Animal. Never heard of them, and literally until NXT this week, had no idea. Never heard of the band, oh. but figured why not play the song because that's what it is. Um, NXT Battleground, Lowell, Massachusetts. And if you didn't know they were Lowell, Massachusetts, you were not paying attention during NXT this week. But boy, did they make that clear during the end, especially during the <laughs> video montage that ended the show, talking about the history of WWE in Lowell, Massachusetts. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> was, so was, NXT was, was in Lowell, Massachusetts? Like, I couldn't believe it. They, they literally put it in. I know I, it was actually really funny to me how many historic moments happened in Lowell, Massachusetts. But <laughs> they put together a video back. <laughs> Um, Kelly, you, you you're like me. You do watch the show every week. These um, Dad, I paid attention while doing pills and that doesn't pay attention at all. So he relies on us yeah. to know what's going on. <laughs> um, I've actually been really enjoying NXT the last couple of months since um him delivering and after the draft. I've been enjoying myself with this show. Yeah, pre stand and deliver was pretty rocky, and a couple of the episodes since then have been rocky. Uh, at one point, I said on my podcast. I don't know how else to say it. Shawn Michaels just doesn't have it. Like he just doesn't, he doesn't have it. And, um, and I don't know what happened. Uh, I think he was inspired by my criticism specifically, uh, listening to my show, obviously, of course, but, uh, but whatever, whatever was going wrong doesn't seem to be wrong. It seems like they're really making a point to they're They're getting people, on the right side of things, Braun Breaker is a born heel. And finally, after a year and a half of just one of the lamest babyface runs I've ever watched, he is finally where he belongs, doing the act he belongs in. Uh, so, I mean, this is this main event is a rerun of last PLE's main event. And this one's so much more interesting because now people are cast properly. Very, it's very true. You're not wrong. Amazing You're not what they wrong. They're not wrong. They're not wrong at all. We'll get there in a couple minutes. Let's start from the bottom to the top here. We have the first defense on an NXT PLE of the Heritage Cup. And um, I'm not going to lie. I'm excited for this. It's only not only for the matchup, because of the rules. It is the British Rounds rules match. They, they thoroughly explained this on NXT this week, which I greatly appreciate. It is Noam Dar taking on Dragon Lee. Kelly, would you like to explain to everybody what the British rules, British Round rules match are in um, a couple of sentences or less? <laughs> yeah, it's uh well, I don't know if that's possible, but I'll try. Um <laughs> I have I saw almost every episode of NXT UK. Uh so I've seen quite a few British rounds matches. I like them. Um I think they make the rounds 3 minutes, but you can make them as long as you want. And you're trying to win a pinfall or any other kind of fall, any other kind of decision in that time. Um and it goes to 6 rounds. Six, I think. Gosh, it's been yeah, a while. Six. Yeah, um, six on Tuesday night. You know, it's funny. They did. The, they showed the rules yesterday, and I didn't pay attention because I'm like, I know how these work. And then I was like, oh, wait, what's the number? <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, yes. And then if it's, a, if it's a draw, then the champ walks out with the cup. Uh, they are really cool. Separate. Uh, it's one of my favorite match types. 
other than regular one-on-one. I, I just think they're a blast. And, um, and I've seen them finish two to nothing. I've seen them finish. They've done all kinds of different things with it. I'm seeing, am I making my prediction yet? Am I, or am I Go leaving you with that? Go for it. Okay. Brother. So as awesome as Dragon Lee is, I don't see a, an obvious roadmap for Dragon Lee as the NXT UK Heritage Cup champion. It, it doesn't seem like a natural fit for him. What I'd like to see is for them to be tied, maybe just 1-1, one, one, because a, a round can go by without a decision rendered. And maybe it's 1-1. One, one, maybe it's nothing-nothing. Uh, but then they're in the sixth round, and Lee has Dar on the ropes, and Dar, being the kind of character he is, just runs away until the three minutes expire. <laughs> um, there are no count-outs? Are there no count outs? Imagine? There are count outs, so he'll have to, you know, he'll have to go okay. in, break so the count, the go check. back out. I want the check. Yep, <laughs> he can still be counted out, but I think it would make sense for Noam Dar to run and defend it, act like he's the awesome conquering champion, when indeed he ran away to uh, save his title, because Noam Dar holding that thing like a baby, like the little bastard he is, it's just the part he was born to play. <laughs> It's I it's agree. perfect. I mm -hmm. agree with that actually, and I actually was looking to Noam Dar. I was actually I like the tie idea a lot. I didn't even think about that logic. That that you don't have to have Dragon Lee actually lose this match. He can lose because of a tie, and that works out nicely. So yeah, I totally see Noam Dar retaining here based on that logic. Sal, what do you think? Wouldn't have a clue, but yeah, uh, Noam Dar retaining. <laughs> no, Dad, what do you think? Uh, I have two questions. One. I know, aren't they each allowed a corner corner man? Yeah, I think when they they Kramer is going to be in um, Dragon Lee. Do we know who Norman Dars is going to be yet, Kelly? Uh, we don't know. He asked some people to be in his corner. The only thing I can say is the last two weeks in a row, he ran into Lash Legend and Miss Jackson in the background, and there's like some weird tension there. So I'm expecting it to maybe be Lash Legend. Okay. What is Last Legend taking the spot of Alicia is, Fox here? Like, is there is there also <laughs> is there also a rule regarding the, the ropes? Uh I don't think so. probably. There are many, yeah. many rules. I just can't remember if there's a if there's a rope rule, I can't remember what it is. Okay. Fair enough. I, 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 I would like Dragon Lee to win, but like everyone's like, he really doesn't have to win to basically get ahead. So I, Norm Dyer is, is going to retain, and unfortunately, slimy little bastard really fits him really well. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, let's get on to the last man standing match, the weirdly booked last man standing match. I, I don't know what this is. It's Billy Dragunov taking on Dijak, fresh out of Dijak's sex dungeon, apparently, from last week's Test Tuesday show. Um, <laughs> I don't know what that segment was. That was weird. Now, you didn't see this. Um. Billy Dragunov went up to Dijak and said, "You can't." Dijak said, "I can break anybody." And Billy said, "You can." And we spent both of the show last week watching them watching Dijak beat the shit out of Dragunov. We don't know why. We have no idea why. <laughs> he didn't break him. It was weird. So we have a last man standing match now. Uh I've never cared less about an last man standing match in my life. And I like both of these guys, but I don't care about this match at all. Um, Kelly, what do you think? I've never cared more about a last man standing match in my life because I've never cared about a last man standing match in my life. I think it is the <laughs> worst, worst stipulation in wrestling. And that's because the coal miners glove isn't done anymore. Uh, otherwise there would be some competition, but I just, there's nothing flatter than a match ending with a long count of 10 because somebody's down. Like, it is just the flattest way to end a match. I, I just, it, it bores me as a wrestling match finish, and um, and that's a bummer. These two will deliver, uh, and as for who wins, I don't, I don't know that it matters, because this one's more about the journey than anything, but if they want to, the one with the greater upside right now is Ilya. Uh, Dijak is kind of damaged goods. He's kind of a reclamation project. So he has to kind of be worked back to that spot. 
I would not be completely surprised if these two had like a Seamus Cesaro respect thing after this and maybe started teaming with each other after this because there did seem to be like it's it's been torture that Dijak has been doing to Ilya and Ilya's just been taking it like he enjoys it. I can see this being a thing where they put these two together. I think there's potential money in either one as a single, but if they decide they want to do these guys as a tag team, I wouldn't complain. If I must pick a winner um, in a match where it doesn't necessarily seem like it's a big deal who wins, I will say Ilya. Fair enough. I was leaving her drag it off myself. Again, I don't think it matters. I don't think it really matters. I do love the idea of them tagging them. I think that would be crazy and fun to watch. Um, even though I already I feel like they're doing the exact same thing right now with Axum and Reggie. So like I don't know. <laughs> the exact same thing with them. And they just did the same thing with um with um Dawn and um Dawn and Fire. So who knows? I mean Shawn Michaels loves his uh his standby storylines. I don't know if he even realizes he repeats them as often as he does. Fair enough. Um Sal, what do you think? Uh, I was going to say Dragunov. Fair enough. Um, Daddy, you going opposite or stick with Dragunov? No, I'm going to stick with Dragunov, but yeah, Kelly's idea of them being a tag team is not that far-fetched, and I think they're they're going to do it. Because it, it seems like they're going to have that mutual respect thing, and it, like Kelly says, like, you know, Sheamus and Cesaro, so we'll see what happens. But I'm hoping it does. I'm hoping it comes to fruition. Um, I will say, I don't think right Dijak has actually won a PLE match since he came back to NXT. I don't think he's won one. I honestly don't think so. I know he lost Oops. to um, Wesley, and I think he lost to Tony D'Angelo as well. So, uh, Oops. so, um, moving on. NXT Tag Team Championships. It is Gallus taking on the Creed Brothers. I feel like we did this right. We're doing it again. Um, I, I'm just shouting out to Mandy, who does not like the Creed Brothers at all. And thinks they have no personality whatsoever. So there you go. <laughs> but um, well, she's wrong. <laughs> I, I don't. I, I'm neutral on the subject matter personally. I like. The, I, I'm more. I'm more of a fan of Ivy than, than even the Creeds. Honestly, <laughs> just because she scared the shit out of me. Um, <laughs> um, Kelly, what do you think? Uh, I am not neutral on this. She is definitely wrong. Um, they have a ton of personality, and what's better is that they have different personalities. Uh, Brutus kind of playing the goofball to Julius's more straight man. Um, I will say that their promo last uh, last night with Gallus, whew, that was oh, bad. pretty <laughs> painful all around. Um, it, it started bad with Gallus, and then Julius and Brutus came out to the ring. Julius got thrown somehow with his line. I don't know if there was a late rewrite or something, but it was a mess. Um yeah, and it it if anything subtracted from what this match could have had going for it. Uh I love these guys in the ring, the Creeds that is, although I I like Gallus in the ring too. Um the Creeds with their hard sliding lariats are just it, it's one of my favorite things. I could, I could see them I literally would watch them beat up jobbers every week for the rest of my <laughs> life. I I like that I like their act in that way that much. Um in the same way that everybody just wanted to see two minute squashes with LOD. That that's literally how I feel about the creeds. Um, it's Ivy who is a little personality deficient, but they're really, really trying to do something with her and get her somewhere. The big question is where Stax fits into all this and whether he's there's kind of a lot of moving parts to this storyline. Because Stax might be the one mm -hmm. who's the police informant getting Tony in trouble. Tony's going to need a lawyer. And now there's an Italian lawyer character on the show. Um, <laughs> no, we're not there's, joking. It's not happening. This is real. <laughs> there's so many moving parts to this. Now, Stax is going to be part of this in some way or another. I don't know what side of the aisle he's going to land on. That's what's interesting to me. Like the... The match itself, I would say, didn't have the greatest build from their standpoint, but because of all the things going on outside it, I'm uh, a little more interested in it. I don't know why the Creeds weren't moved north already. I don't know what else they really need to do down there unless they are there to kind of help 
Ivy Nile through some rocky times and uh, not make her have to be on the mic as much because they're there. But I, ha, huh, I would say Gallus should win for um, for the sake of the Creeds moving up. But even if the Creeds aren't moving up, I think that the Creeds are going to have something going on with stacks after this that will be away from the championship. So I will cautiously say Gallus, but I'm very, very torn on this one. Uh, you know, that was one of those moments where I realized that I doesn't want the show. We're explaining how Tony D'Angelo is being talked to by cops and this is a Thai lawyer and all <laughs> kinds of stuff going on at right now. But it's so intriguing that it's fun to watch. Um, <laughs> but um, so I'm actually going to go with Gallus Retains as well. I, I actually like the idea of the Creed having some issues with stacks and having issues with, like, randomly Tony D'Angelo, even though he's not even involved in the story like right now. <laughs> like, it's so like, random to look at that for, for no reason. But I do like that idea a lot. Um. Yeah, um, as much as I love the Creeds, I'm going to say that Gallus is going to retain. Dad? I'm going to be the odd man out. I'm going to say the Creeds win because Stax is going to be the equalizer against Joe Coffey interfering. And down the road, I know it's coming for the Creeds to be called up. I would like to see them in a match against Alpha Academy. That'd be fun. That'd be fun, actually. That'd actually be a lot of fun. Um, let's move on. North American Championship. Wesley taking on Tyler Bate and Joe Casey. Um, what's interesting about this whole thing for me is I actually like the storyline of Wesley actually thinking that Tyler Bate... I, I actually like the fact that Wesley is like, you telling Tyler Bate, I, you could have just asked me for a match. You don't have to go back way, back, back way to get into the triple threat match like this. And um, Wesley actually feeling hurt and feeling betrayed. I actually like that. Um, what's funny is Somebody actually made a comparison to Wesley's title reign here to like Orange Cassidy's title defenses over in AEW. And they're kind of like they're doing the exact same storyline where like Orange is getting hurt and like every single time he goes in the match, he's more hurt. And I feel like it's <laughs> trying to do with Wesley here. But I actually am enjoying Wesley, so I can't really see them taking the belt off him. Um, so Wesley retains for me. Kelly. This is actually the toughest one to call for me. And um, and it is interesting the three-way issue they've got going because Joe Gacy was trying so hard to sow the seeds of dissension between the two baby faces. And it kind of worked um, because Wesley is overreacting to Tyler Bate wanting that shot, but they motivated that by not having Bate be as upfront about it as he could have been. It, it really did work on every level they wanted. And I, I love the talking point that Wesley says he actually trusts Joe Gacy more because he knows that Joe Gacy is going to work against him and he knows he's a bastard. Like that kind of is a fun talking point. Uh, the match will be bizarre because of these very, very different, um, like you got strong style, high flyer and ground-based guy all in one match. It's going to be very interesting to see how they, do this. Um, it's good that the heel is the bigger one because the baby faces who now have issues with each other are going to have to try to chop him down together, even though they don't want to work together. Um, I think this could be real interesting if they really want to continue the thing with Bait and Lee. Then I think the best way to do that would be to have Lee ready to pin Gacy and then bait steal the pin from Wesley and pin Gacy himself. Um, yeah, I think I just talked myself into that. Tyler Bate wins. Fair enough. Um, Sal? Uh, I was going to say Tyler Bate because I love him. <laughs> Fair enough. That's a good so do I. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> um, Dad, where are you going? I got to go with Tyler Bates. I, I think it, it's time to take a belt off of Wes. And then you're going to have Western heel. I don't see West being a heel, personally. I just don't see it. But I, I continue taking the belt off, and I just don't see it being like a heel turn. I don't see that happening, personally. Yeah, West with Edge works for me. But West as a heel would be... It, it, I mean, maybe if they want to just try it out in NXT, because NXT is the place to try that out. And if it doesn't work, just move him up as a baby face. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, um, moving on. Sorry, I got distracted by something. Uh, moving on, we have the NXT Women's Championship match. 
obviously, um, I um, yeah, she's great. Indy Hartwell, she won the belt, got hurt, had vacated the belt, and then got drafted all in a matter of like three days. So <laughs> we now have we've had actually a pretty good, interesting tournament. I can't even say good, but an interesting tournament. I I did not expect this matchup. To, I didn't exactly expect this matchup. I really thought we were going to end up doing Cora versus Roxanne again, and I'm happy they didn't do that route. So we have <laughs> Tiffany Stratton versus Laya Valkyria. And I think this is pretty much going to be Tiffany Stratton's crowning moment to win this title and run this division for a while. Kelly, are you in a grant? Yeah, I, uh, this is the final that I expected when they showed the bracket. Um, I, with Jade, there's stuff to do with her away from the championship. Uh, with Roxanne, it seems like we were there, um, I'm I'm a little afraid she's taking too many losses in big spots, but that's why they didn't put her in the finals to lose in the finals on a bigger stage. But uh, but this is what I thought would happen when the bracket was announced, and then they added the injury angle to Lyra Valkyria, which I said on my podcast last night. If you don't know what this means for the finish of the PLE match, then welcome to your first wrestling show. Um, it, it's clear that. Stratton is going to win, anchor the division. And the only downside of that is that with the exclusion of nobody except maybe Carmelo Hayes, she's more main roster ready than literally anybody on the entire NXT roster. Um, she is a product that could go up there today and contribute today. And of every single woman on that roster, she is the one who I think has the biggest potential to be a main event star on the main roster, uh, whereas I see a hard cap for just about everybody there. Last night, Nate threw in that I was forgetting the injured Saul Ruka, and he's correct. She has come a long way in a very short amount of time. I also love Stevie Turner, but we only saw her once before Thank her you. ACL got... Uh, well, that's ripped. what happened? That's what happened? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was wondering what happened to her. <laughs> yeah, there's eight ACL tears among women in... Uh, NXT right now. It is the craziest the last thing. thing. I brought that yep, up yep. last week with all the injuries. Mm -hmm. I brought that up last week. Yeah. Like, Rook oh is one God. of them. Mm -hmm. um, or Turner's one of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not know about that. I was wondering what happened to Stevie. I was like, I, I, what happened to Stevie Turner? Like, I really was actually loving her, and then she wasn't here for a while. Thank you. I didn't know that. Um, Sal, go ahead. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of agree. I, I think, you know, the way that Tiffany Stratton has been uh, presented these past few months and even longer than now, I should say. Uh, I really feel like this is the her moment, and it would be a shame if she does not capitalize on this golden opportunity to finally be the top woman in NXT. That, yeah, I mean, I, I don't see a different outcome. I, I think if you would have had Roxanne in it, I think it would have been too predictable. So then you're throwing Tiffany in because I think Tiffany is ready to do that. I think she's ready to be a, a champion and, and to take the women's division to uh, other places. Um, I just don't want them to basically make a carbon copy of Mandy Rose. That's the only thing I don't want to do. I, I agree that Tiffany's a lot more talented than Mandy Rose. She's she is in every way better than Mandy 100%. Rose. So I wouldn't I worry that. about that. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about that. <laughs> and, uh, you know, she had to be careful with that match last night because it uh, looked like uh, June was going to be busting out all over in a little bit. Wardrobe malfunction. Yeah, yeah. That, that's why the TV went block at one point, didn't it? At one point. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. All right, main event. We talked about at the top right here. It's NXT Championship. It is a rematch. It is Carmelo Hayes, now a fresh face with Trick Moyam in his home state, home city, I guess, around the area, versus sure. heel Ron Breaker. And boy, as Kelly said at the top, Ron's a fantastic heel. <laughs> a fantastic heel. And I, I'm loving this as well. I mean, you're keeping the belt on Carmelo here, but damn. Brought of the heels, amazing, Kelly. Yeah, and it's not like he's doing groundbreaking stuff. It's just when somebody, when that's his skill set, why would you cast him as anything but a heel? Like maybe you get a babyface run out of him down the road 
uh, if you're able to push him effectively as a real buzzsaw. But I, I just don't think it would work at all if they brought him up as a, a, a like he might get the Steiner recognition pop at first, but I think people would really tire of just the fact that, I mean, he, he would be a bygone baby face, like the, the baby face who goes up and yells every other word in the promo. It, it just, it didn't work at all. He was so lame. Um, so I'm so more excited with clearly defined roles on the right sides. I have worried a thousand times that Trick Williams was going to turn against Carmelo Hayes, and they they have to have talked about that internally. Like, it's always an option. But I think those two belong together, and I think that uh, that I'd prefer... I know they break up almost everybody before they go to the main roster. Not everybody, but almost everyone. But I would be heavily in favor of those two guys staying together. Trick is just such a great hype man. Um, I, I would be... Really bummed if they split them up. Uh, I do think that this is Carmelo who wins here and um, and maybe not long after this, uh, Braun, they find a reason to bring Braun up to the main roster, whether that be post SummerSlam or whatever. I, I don't know, but I think that I don't think that Braun should hang out there much longer if he lose this, loses this one. I think he should just uh, head north. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I agree. Uh, I think Carmelo Hayes should retain, and this should be pretty much the end of Braun Breaker in the NXT title picture. Uh, I mean, he should have left a while ago, in my opinion. Uh, so maybe this will be his final hurrah. Maybe one more go just for, you know, uh, try to get it back again. And then other than that, he should be gone. Well, when the, when the, when the main story point here is that Braun said, I don't care about the title. I just want to beat you in your hometown. That was actually what he said. That was actually what he said. <laughs> and for some reason, he decided to tear down Boston sports teams in Florida, which I thought was hysterical. But um, <laughs> that was the thing that happened. I'm down. Oh. Uh, I see Carmelo retaining, and like everyone's saying, I see Braun being called up uh, in in a couple of months, and I hope they have him come up with the heel persona because man, I, he's doing such a phenomenal job that way. I mean, and he's taking it. Really, well, I mean, dressing all in black and everything, and showing less emotion and more anger. I mean, it, it's great. I mean, to me, I think Braun is a better heel than his uncle. Fair enough. Fair enough. Well, that is NXT Battleground, and.